What's going on boys and girls, my name is VK and welcome to a brand new exciting phenomenal creations tutorial. In today's Premiere Pro tutorial you are going to be learning step by step how you can start creating those ultra smooth and snappy zoom in and zoom out transitions all inside Premiere Pro and you're also going to be learning how to save those into a preset so you never have to do the grunt work and animating every time you want to apply these transitions in your creative workflow. That sounded cool? Okay, let's start cracking. Alright, so now since we are inside Premiere, let's go ahead and take a quick look on what this transition will look like and then start building it from scratch. So that was it. This is how it looks like, pretty smooth, quick, snappy, just the way I like it. And this is particularly the zoom out version. But we're going to begin with creating the zoom in and then you will be learning how to convert them from zoom in to zoom out super quickly with maybe a couple clicks and then save those into presets so you don't have to do these animations over and over again. So okay, let's go ahead and start building this from scratch. Alright, so this is the way I like to begin. We have two clips side by side with a really straight cut here. And now let's go ahead and begin building this transition. And the best part about this transition is that we are not manipulating the clips in any way. We're using adjustment layers that will have the effects in it so you can change the clips however you want and don't have to mess with keyframes on specific clips. So what I like to do is to zoom in on this cut between these clips Take an adjustment layer which I have created by creating a new item and adjustment layer. So I have already one created here and I will drop it in here in the middle of the cut. Then I'll go to that cut and, and count in six frames. That's about the length I like my transitions but the best part you can manipulate the timing however you want after I told you how to customize this. So using the arrow keys I can count one, two, three, four, five, six frames. Take my cut key here and cut that adjustment layer like this one. Then what I like to do is to, uh, duplicate, so hold Alt and drag so I have a duplicate of this. And now I will extend this six frames, like this we can see here on the gray little box here that we have extended the six frames, so it's double the length of the first one. And this will have the scaling and the motion yeah, built in. So now let's go ahead and, and start with the base. And this is going to be like the foundation on how these zoom in and zoom out effect work. So what I like to do is here at effects and presets panel, we're going to find a effect called replicate. And when we drop it in, we can see that it makes like a four a la two by two replication of the footage we have applied to. But we're going to be drop, uh, like pumping this up to three. So we have a three by three. So nine different elements here. And this is our center frame. This is where the transitions will zoom in and zoom out from. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be mirror all these edges of the replications. So we're kind of like giving the illusion that this, this particular clip is a lot larger than it actually is. So from the FX panel, we're going to find the mirror effect under the distort panel, drop it in here. And we're going to now copy and paste three more copies so we have four copies of this mirror effect at place. So the first thing we're going to do is go take the first one and give it a 90 degree uh, mirroring. And from there we're going to use this, the, the Y axis to move this so it just meets the line of these clips. 719 is usually the right way to go. Then let's go to the next reflection angle, have minus 90 on that one, and then do the same thing, but from the top, like this one. Then let's go to the next one, we have that on zero, that's pretty good, and now we're going to work with the x-axis to move it further in here, so that line meets, good. And the next one, the last one, is that we take to 180 degrees, sorry, minus 180 degrees. And then we're going to move this right there. 
And now the hardest part is over. Believe it or not, this was the hardest part of this whole transition thing. And because this ha is the base for this entire transition and will work as identically for zoom in and zoom out. So that's really cool. All right, so now when the base is created, we have made this replication, this mirror base, which will work as a foundation for the zoom in and zoom out transition. Let's go ahead and work with that actual zoom in animation. So what we're gonna do is select this longer adjustment layer and apply the transform effect on it. So this is going to be the entire animation in the core animation for this entire transition. So because we're working with zooming and zooming out, we're using the scale parameter. So I like to work so I go somewhere um, in the beginning of this uh, adjustment layer and hit the scale parameter stopwatch so we are applying some animation and then let's go around to the end but not really we're going to be fix this, fixing this later and then we're going to boost this up to 300 percent since we were having a three by three replication by zooming in 300 percent we are zooming back to the original framing and then what we're going to do is go ahead and select both of these animation points go to auto bezier. And this is basically we are creating easy easing and creating that, those smooth snappy animations. So by going down this drop down menu, we can see uh, the curves here, but we don't see them really well. So let's go ahead and, and move these anchors a little bit lower so we can see the entire curve. So what I usually like to do is go ahead and move this from the bottom of these two so we're having a, a more significant like this, this curve here where you can see that it goes like slowly and then it has a really high velocity, like an apex, where this here, the, the animation is the fastest and then slowing back down. And this apex, I really want to be uh, on the cut where the clips are changing from one to another. So I can see it happens here. So it's actually pretty good that it's it's actually right here that looks pretty well so let's go in and see how that looks like it looks really nice but the only thing we don't have here is motion blur so that's the only thing that's missing so it, it does look really nice it's it's smooth it's rapid it's snappy but we don't have that natural motion blur that would happen if the camera would move like this in this kind of space so Commonly, when you're working with zooming in and zooming out effects, it's very common to use something like a radial blur, and then you have like manually animate the the intensity of the radial blur um, inside the program. Unfortunately, Premiere doesn't have this kind of blurring option, but it does have something better, and it's all built into the transform effect. So we don't need to apply new effects or applying new animations because it's all built into the transform effect. And it's it's here under the shutter angle. And what it basically does, it replicates the fact when on your cameras you can change the shutter speed so you can get more natural motion blur. Shutter angle is pretty much the same thing, but when we apply this to 180 degrees, and let's go ahead and de-click the use composition shutter angle. Then what it does, it will give realistic motion blur throughout the animation. And the best part is that even if we would change the animation, so the scaling would be a lot more exponential and faster, the shutter angle will help that even if you change the animation type, it will change the motion blur accordingly so it looks natural. And that is the biggest part. So now when we look this back, it looks so nice because it's smooth, it's snappy, and it has that natural motion blur inside it. So nice. And now if you want to make this shorter or longer, the only thing you need to do is if you adjust the, the length of the adjustment layer, the only thing you do is that then you move just the, the keyframes closer to each other or, more, or farther away from each other. To, to change the, the way the zooming and the zooming out works. So now when we have done this, let's go in and save this to a preset. So you don't have to do this, this kind of core animation over and over again when you want to apply this over and over again in your creative workflow. 
All right, so let's work with the base first. Let's select the base and we have here our mirror effects. So what I want to do is go ahead and hold down the control or command key and select all the mirror layers and the replicate effect and then right click and save presets. And I usually like to have this as um, transition base, but since I already have one, I will name this as base number one. And this, I want to have it anchored to in point because every time we add this, it will add this effect from the in point of the effects. So you don't have to match keyframes and this kind of stuff with each other. So having this click on OK. And then now if I would take an adjustment layer here and then I'll go to presets and find transition base one. I already have the transition base. So then I will drop this on here. And boom, now we have that transition base on this clip. So the only thing you have to do is creating this six frame long adjustment layer in the on one of the clips and then, then just add the transition base. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for this uh, adjustment layer where we have the, the core animation itself. So we're just having the transform tool here, right click, save preset, and I will call this zooming in. And this I will have on type of scale since we're scaling in. So I want to have it by scale. Click OK. And now if I would go ahead and delete this, uh, our animation, what we have done here and create like a, a new adjustment layer, go one, two, three, four, five, six frames, cut it here like this, duplicate that, extend this six frames like this. So now we have the basic how we began this, but now we're going to use our presets. So I'm going to take the transition base one, put that here and take the zooming in preset, put that here and then we'll play it back and boom, we have our transition made. So this is really cool for you to have since now you have saved that into a preset and the only thing you have to do is to build out these two adjustment layers and then you can always have our little animation here. So now you might be thinking, is it hard to do the zoom out? It's actually not. We can zoom in here and take the adjust the base layer and move it across so it's on the other side on the first clip here. Go to, to the adjustment layer and then just switch the places on the the animation so it it's zooming out. So you're having from 300% to 100%. And then the only thing we can check that have it like this. Let's take the keyframe down so we can see the animation. So when the, it cuts here, we're having our apex of animation here. And now when we, you have pretty, okay, now I did change the zooming in, which I didn't need to do. And boom, now we have our zooming and zoom out functions for the entire clip. And now you can take these, transform in, save preset and have this as zoom out like that now you have a zoom out in your presets and the base is still the same so now you have two transitions in one basically and having all those into presets which you can use over and over again and that's super powerful and hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial that was it for this time thank you guys so much for watching this video tutorial if you did enjoy it please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you never miss out on a brand new tutorial on the channel don't forget to give me a like and a comment telling me what you think of this one and yeah my name is vk i'll see you guys in the next tutorial so take care